Welcome everyone to this episode of Freedom Hub's Working Group. I am your host, Jeff Cantor, along with my co-host, Charles Froman. We are sponsored, importantly, by the Marketplace for Health, Wealth, and Freedom. We use the acronym MPHWF.com to keep it simple. And also the Freedom Hub, where we are the disruptors intersection, because again, the most important thing is getting all the freedom activists and entrepreneurial disruptors together. And that's really our goal. So we appreciate you being here today. Importantly, these are all being recorded because there's some really great stuff that's out there. You don't necessarily have to jot all this down and I'll show you why in a minute, but you can register, get weekly notices. We're on all of these channels. I would encourage you to go there and subscribe to every one of them because we need the subscribers and that generates traffic, which gets us trending on any and all these channels. And so it's important, especially based on everything that's been afoot. And then we we'll also have a couple other similar shows, one that'll be tonight at seven, the cash patient one, and that we're not always running the one on the right, the Accelerating Financial Freedom, but we have a lot that are archived on those sites where you can go see all of that. There's some really amazing stuff about how to get control of your own money for a change. And then the other one, which is important, is getting back control of your health which is enormously important. That's why it's the Health Wealth Freedom site because these are all important personal issues you really have to address. So again, here are the two website addresses, takes you to the same place. But let me show you here for a second. When you get over there, this is the main site. There's a bunch of drop downs. You'll wanna come and explore. There's a lot of stuff that's being added continually. We have a tab if you go on the hub on the home link and watch the drop down there's the webinar and continuing the conversation we'll come back to the webinar tab continuing the conversation is after the person that you got to hear like today karen you're going to want to hear about this again or more get involved in some way so here's your way to do so by jumping up on this continuing the conversation and connecting with the speaker from the past and frankly sadly you could look at somebody that's a year old on this list. It's just as current as what Kieran's going to talk about today. None of these problems, unfortunately, are as fixed as we would like, but a lot of them have moved a long way. You know, Kieran's is going to be maybe different, but a few of these things actually have progressed. So, but it, but it takes all of us to make that happen. And then to take it to a broader spectrum is all of these organizations, which again, if you hover under the freedom tab, fighting for freedom. This is a pretty important tab here. And again, there's a lot to look at, but these are the critical ones. We feature all the issues and action items. And sadly, every one of these you need to click on and take advantage of. It's not like one or the other. And when they're over with or the issues resolved or whatever happened tied to this petition or whatever it might be, then they're removed. So everything here is current, which means you need to deal with every one of them. And then this is an ever-growing list of freedom organizations, so not everybody understands how many different ones there are, and some of the ones that are in certain organizations, they don't even know about each other. So this is a way for everybody to start to find out all of who's out there trying to make good things happen for us, and we need to support them because they're out there trying to support us. We do also, lastly, have a LinkedIn page for this, and you certainly might want to become a participant in there. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. But as I said, when we're at the home page, and you hover, you'll notice it says webinars. So this is kind of the epicenter here. So on this instance, when you come over here, it gives you a little intro. And then it always gives you the breakdown of who's going to be on the two episodes, the four o'clock, which we're at right now, and the seven o'clock, which will be later today. And every week it's updated to match whoever's that day. Here's a way you can register as a consequence and to give you an idea what that looks like. Everybody gets a unique and custom place to land so you, you can really get tied to that particular speaker. And then also importantly, two other things. Here's a list of who's coming. So there's always some really great stuff forthcoming and you're certainly gonna wanna take a look at, at that and tie into the, the ones you want. And luckily though, every one of them are recorded. So we're on all these platforms at both of these episodes. And so, like I said, you didn't have to jot that down. You just come here and click on any one you choose and boom, there you go. You're over on the site to see what we talked about. And it's a nice long archive. There's a lot of great stuff. Some really amazing people in America trying to make some fantastic stuff happen. Wouldn't you agree, Charles? I would. And let's see who's going to try to help make some great stuff happen today. Why don't you do the honors here for us? Gladly, Jeff, and welcome, Karen. This is... Um... 
a big issue and has been since the 2001 terrorism, uh, when the government exploited the fear of terrorists to take away our privacy and uh, right to security and our person, place, and effects, the Fourth Amendment. And they started the Homeland Security bureaucracy and these fusion centers. Pretty soon, Senator Coburn, in 2012 at the Homeland Security Committee, wasn't really impressed with uh, our domestic police forces stoppage of terrorism and issued a report saying just that. It was a big waste of money. Of course, nothing happened. And governments always grow. It's, uh, you know, it's just uh, too much opportunity for power for the special interest behind each agency to let them go. And this past summer, in the middle of the COVID hysteria, some with a transparency collective or some group of hackers uh, got the data from the main fusion centers, the, the fusion centers in the, in the state of Maine and discovered that these local cops and federal officers working with them to assemble intelligence on so-called threats had deputized your neighbors as a snitch army, a Gestapo, to come up with suspicious activity reports on any kind of vague suspicious action, even a controversial Facebook post, uh, all in the effort to build watch lists, which of course is just there to justify the police state. And there were some articles this past summer about the, that uh, data dump, how the fusion centers were targeting gun owners and patriots. Of course, nothing happened. Um, funding is always uh, going to these bureaucracies no matter what. And now we have a great gift to the fusion centers and the police state supporters with a suddenly new threat of patriots, kind of a, a redux of the, the patriot threat when Bill Clinton got elected. This will be as overblown as every other uh, alarmist scare tactic about threats. Uh, but Glenn Greenwald just published a good story how Biden is going to probably exploit this to move the uh, terrorist you know, watching efforts internationally to domestically. So Trump, Trumpsters beware. And as Karen from the National Security Agency, where she was an intelligence analyst, will present today, it's, uh, it's a lot worse than what I'm saying. A lot of these fusion centers are targeting dissidents with some pretty nefarious actions, mobster-like intimidation, disinformation campaigns to uh, hurt targeted individuals' careers, uh, their access to medical care. They're even using really freaky uh, radio frequency weaponry against targeted individuals. It's really... Uh, it's really Orwellian. So uh, with that, Jeff, let's hear from Karen. All right, thank you very much. And I appreciate uh, you allowing me to speak on this. I've been trying for a handful of years to get the uh, information out to people. Uh, as you said, I was an intelligence analyst at the National Security Agency um, where I ended up writing a series of top secret reports that lasted about six months to help Operation Iraqi Freedom, which I thought at the time was legitimate, what it turns out it wasn't particularly. Um, but those reports um, saved an estimated 2,000 lives according to the Pentagon and according to top NSA um, management and uh, my upper boss, not my immediate one, but my upper boss thought, well, what the heck, why should we give this, this uh, older woman uh, a double promotion and credit for these reports when I can just credit the woman I'm sleeping with at work? So that's what he did. And I was told that uh, uh, the promotion I was considered for was, was turned down and, and I was fine with that. But then later, you know, uh, about a year or two later, I found out no, somebody else got my promotion. So I actually went to the inspector general and no. almost immediately attacked. And to make a long story short, um, basically they accused me of mysterious breaches, which they couldn't be bothered to tell me what they were, and then um, forced me out of NSA. 
So, and that was after a defamation campaign and it was after NSA security stalking and harassing me 24 seven, following me from my home to work and back and all around grocery stores, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a very familiar pattern to me. Um, they did uh, fire me, but luckily I fought and got a partial retirement and I proceeded to sue them. So for, I would say from, they fired me about 2010 and until about 2015, after having stalked and harassed me about four years, um, they, they left me alone for a while until 2015 when my uh, lawyer came up with a request to subpoena paperwork that would indicate a top NSA um, SES manager had actually been breaking into my house and they were not happy that I had ferreted him out. So I had moved to Florida. I was staying with my elderly parents for a while since my mother had um, health issues. And in Florida, apparently, uh, NSA came down and talked to the Fusion Center and said, you know, we think that she's a terrorist or something. They made up something. And so you need to get your civilian uh, vigilantes called InfraGuard. You need to tell them what a terrible threat she is, what a terrible person she is, how we just can't quite um, prosecutor for anything. We don't seem to have the evidence that we need. And so they had people stalking and harassing me 24 seven. And um, when that didn't work, that lasted about a year. When that didn't work, um, they introduced uh, electronic weaponry, which um, that is called basically directed energy weapons and the United States military and government have been and intelligence agencies have been working on directed energy weapons for 60 plus years, but they really weren't talking about them, but they now are the, the next weapons race. And they don't really want you to know about that because uh, President Putin of Russia had actually recorded an interview and said, we plead with the United States to not pursue this type of weaponry because nuclear weapons dissuades everyone from doing anything nefarious. We're perfectly happy with that. You know, we're perfectly happy the United States doesn't want to nuke us because they don't want to be nuked and vice versa. He said, I would advise not pursuing this. But of course, the United States is pursuing it. China's pursuing it. Russia's pursuing it. Iran is pursuing it. And these weapons are horrific, absolutely horrific. They go from anything, anything from radio frequencies to lasers and um, potentially scalar waves, even though there is some kind of... Um, disagreement as to whether that exists or not, but I think we're talking about um, technology that is maybe a century or two ahead of us that they're not telling us about. So the possibilities there that that does exist, even though people say that doesn't. So we'll find out. But I wanted to recap for people who might not understand, but the, the Department of Homeland Security came into uh, being with the passage of the Homeland Security Act in November 2002. Um, it is a standalone cabinet level department to coordinate and unify Homeland Security efforts. And uh, let's see now, uh, it actually started up um, May 1st, 2003. And oddly enough, some of the two of the contributors to how it works was Yevgeny Primakov from the KGB and Marcus Wolf from the East German Stasi. Now, these people are not exactly known for protecting their citizens. They're known for belonging to entities that oppressed their citizens. In fact, uh, the Stasi, the East German secret police, created something called Zerzetzung, and that is roughly translated, it means a decomposition of someone's life um, emotional, famil uh, familial, career, uh, mentally, physically, it's a total destruction of a human being through psychological ops. Because at, at that point in the 80s when they were using it, they were not employing uh, directed energy weapons at that point, but they were driving all kinds of dissidents to suicide, which is what they were intending to do. They wanted these people to off themselves so they wouldn't be blamed and they would get rid of these inconvenient people. Well, that has been taken up by the Department of Homeland Security. Um, fusion centers then were created in the wake of, of the 2001 terrorist attacks. And um, 
basically they were for gathering intelligence and surveillance among, and, and sharing it among law enforcement agencies. They wanted the DEA, the NSA, the CIA, um, the FBI to share information with the local police, sheriff's department, um, et cetera, et cetera, and for them to share back up the chain. So they didn't wanna miss anything which I find rather ironic because I was at NSA for 9-11. For and uh, two days after it happened, I came back in and was told by another analyst who worked in a different shop that he and his team in his office had written six months worth of warnings about 9-11 that were squelched by Director of NSA, um, General Hayden and Deputy Director Bill Black. They were squelched. These people were told to shut the heck up. They were not allowed to report it or they would be dealt with harshly. So this man actually was in the hall crying when I walked into work. So I was rather horrified and I waited for that information to come out and for people to get in trouble and it never did. Um, I didn't get the man's name so there was really no one to go to with that information because it was hearsay at that point. Uh, nine years later, there was another gentleman from NSA I met who told me exactly the same story. So I did pass his name to the 9-11, the new 9-11 commission, and I'm hoping something can come of that. But this only shows that the whole Homeland Security Police State concept was fabricated, and it cost almost 3,000 people their lives to create this police state on a false basis. So I wanted to add that because it's, it's horrible. And uh, the fusion centers, like I said, were supposedly created to help fuse intelligence so that people wouldn't be taken unaware again. They have now expanded to about a number of 80 throughout the United States. And as you said before, there are multiple articles through the years saying, what is it the fusion centers are doing? They're spending you know, millions to billions of dollars and we're seeing nothing for it. They have identified no terrorist activity of any consequence, nothing that, uh, that uh, had any value, nothing that came about you know, that was true. And they certainly have stopped no terrorist attacks whatsoever. So what, what they did was they started to include crimes and nefarious threats or nebulous threats um, claiming people were criminals so that they needed to investigate them. So they would write up something and send it to the FISA court, get a surveillance warrant, and then they would surveil the person to death. Uh, all you needed, according to Barack Obama in 2013, was two people saying that you were a this or a that. You know, you're a bank robber, you're a pedophile, whatever. All you needed was two people to say that and swear to it. There was no proof necessary. There was no um, finding out if those people perhaps had an ulterior motive. Did they have a grudge? Uh, did your daughter beat out somebody else's daughter for high school, you know, queen or something like that? You know, so they never they never investigated that. They just let almost anything roll, and they would take it to the FISA court, lie to the FISA court. Um, I, I should go back and say that uh, there was a lawsuit that found out that the uh, once you ask the fusion center to target someone, they put in a request to the main fusion center, which I'm not sure which one that is. It could very well be the DC one, but I'm not sure. But you can put in a request for a false dossier to be written up on the person and given to the um, fusion center nearest that person. They take it to their civilian vigilantes, InfraGuard and, and others, and they actually use some crime gangs. They use people from criminal gangs. Um, they take it to them and say, okay, this is a person we're gonna be stalking and harassing 24 seven. This is the supposed crime. Um, and of course the, the excuse is, you know, we have, this is, this is social justice because we just can't quite get the evidence we need to, to actually charge the person and lock them up. So we're just gonna destroy them this way. So they have a never ending investigation which uh, actually includes not only 24 seven harassment, but it can include slitting your tires, arranging car accidents, murdering or stealing your pets, um, sabotaging your car so that uh, you have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on, on the car repair, uh, going to your job and telling your, your boss that you're a horrible person, you're a psychopath, you're a, 
you're a pedophile, blah, blah, blah. He needs to fire you. And of course he will, you know, because uh, fusion centers can put pressure on people because they turn out to be bullies. They're just bullies. And they can say, you know, you fire him and uh, we'll give you, you know, special consideration. But if you don't fire him, we can make sure that your business doesn't, isn't as successful as it has been. So they definitely apply pressure to people. Um, I've been told multiple times and experienced it, that they will apply pressure to medical people to botch your tests or lie to you about the test or misread them or show you the test results for someone else so that you either don't know that you have been injured or you think you've been injured when you haven't. So a lot of that is going on. And of course, that makes it nearly impossible for a targeted individual to record uh, physical damage being done to them by the weapons they have decided to include in this quote unquote surveillance. Um, the, the weapons that I have been told about are come in about three categories. One, the directed energy weapons, which can be handheld or they can be powered by car engines or they can be standalone that is um, basically aimed at you from a, uh, a neighbor who's very concerned that you are a whatever it is they tell them. And they're very interested in the, in the under the table gift cards that fusion centers funnel through what it looks like to be uh, Lockheed Martin will take tax dollars from the fusion centers and, and uh, create gift cards for people or the people who are in on this uh, harassment 24 seven hitting you with weapons, um, they get a nice tidy sum or they get um, services like uh, new furniture, new carpeting, uh, new roof, uh, new riding mower. You know, if you see people around your neighborhood suddenly getting all these new items, then it becomes very suspicious and very likely those people are actually participating one way or another. Um, there are other people that they pay to stalk and harass you by vehicle. And they are the ones who usually get the, um, the gift cards for a stint. They might have a four hour uh, stint of following you around and trying to hit you with weapons as you drive or as you go to the doctor or something like that. So that's what they call investigating. Uh, a second type of attack on you, um, they are employing gases and poisons that the military industrial complex wants to find out how they work on certain people. Are you a white female? What does this poison do, you, do to you? Are you a black male? What does this poison do to you? Um, are you oriental? What does this gas do to you? So the fusion centers, which are always desperate for money, and of course they are adding people onto the watch list to make it appear there are many more threats than there are for the sake of money and for the sake of continuing their careers, that uh, basically um, it's creating a police state when we don't need one. You know, I'm sorry, but there aren't that many terrorists. There just aren't. I mean, in almost 20 years, they haven't stopped any terrorist attack that was planned. They haven't found any terrorist attack that was planned. So now they're throwing you and me onto the terrorist watch list to create a threat that's simply not there so they can garner almost billions, maybe billions of dollars, you know, for the 80 and growing number of fusion centers all around the country. Uh, another thing that they will do is if they, if you have an opportunistic uh, operation, they could go in there and insert medical chips that they want to find out what they can do. Some of these medical chips, well, the, everybody gets chipped one way or the other with a GPS so they can find you anywhere they, that you go. So there's nowhere to hide. Um, they can find you in a building. They can find you in a crowd. Um, they know when you're traveling. It's, it's really horrific. And then to get those chips out, if you can find them, is um, thousands of dollars because it's voluntary a voluntary operation. So it's not covered. And it becomes extremely expensive to take them out one by one. If you can get a doctor who hasn't been threatened and told you're not going to take that chip out, that's federal business and you're not going to touch it or you're going to lose your license. So they will go and bully people to not help you. Um, if there is a police, if there's a policeman who tries to help you, he'll be told by his supervisor, stay out of it or lose your career. And of course, the upper echelon police and sheriff um, department people know to not interfere. In fact, um, 
one of the duty officers of a sheriff's department near me showed me, he listened to my story and uh, he took me out to his car in the parking lot and he opened up the trunk and he showed me a handful of manila folders that may have numbered 12 to 20. And uh, those were folders that he said the Fusion Center told them, these are people you cannot help. You're not allowed to give them equal protection under the law. These are people we are secretly investigating, but it's not gonna be on any roll anywhere. There's nobody who can get a lawyer to subpoena these records because they're in the trunk of the duty officer's car. And when we get a subpoena, we don't say, hey, you didn't put the trunk of my car. You know, so no, we don't have these records. There, we're, there's no investigation, uh, investigation against Tom Smith. One there is. Uh, like I said, they use investigation to basically destroy people because they have no intention of charging them with anything. Um, but again, when we get back to the third type of harassment and human trafficking, because they're making money from doing this uh, on the side, um, there are the chips, they're medical chips, and they can uh, basically strate strategically place them for transhumanism experimentation to, to see if they can make somebody's arm or leg or whatever move when they are controlling it remotely and the person can't resist. Um, they also have chips that will deteriorate the person's body in an effort to mimic the destruction of the body by a certain disease so they can watch and see how the body deteriorates so that that person whose life they're destroying can serve as a model for them to come up with a cure for the cash cows who actually are born with this, this disease or malady or get it. So they use healthy people to destroy their health um, with never helping them. They just destroy the health and then they don't, you know, the person can't prove it. So um, they just go ahead and destroy that person's life. Tough luck for them. They learn a lot about the disease and then they charge people who have it millions of dollars to treat them. So they make money off of death, destroying the targeted individual's life. In all of these cases, gases, poisons, uh, electromagnetic radiation, which can be, um, it, it's horrible. I mean, they can hit somebody's whole house with it and then you have pets and, and children or parents or husbands or, what, or wives die who happen to be near you. And it's, they're just collateral damage and these people don't care. But the viciousness of the, the defamation is really astonishing because they scare people to death. They tell you, oh, you know, that 84 year old woman who's been living there 30 years and then uh, watching your children when they come home early from school until you get back at five um, and giving them cookies and milk. Oh, she's really a, a, a serial killer, you know, and people are so stupid that if you show them a badge, they will believe anything. And they're so greedy that once you say, hey, here's some under the, under the table money that is not taxable, you don't have to do much of anything. And we can increase your income, you know, a third or a half with these secret payments if you just, and then they tell you, they give you something to do to harass that person or actually hurt that person. So, um, this is what the, the fusion centers are up to. They're loading the terrorist watch list with perfectly innocent people. They know that they're perfectly innocent and they're destroying their money, their, their lives for money. Not only the government money that they're being paid to, to use to fight terrorists, but they are getting paid on the side by the military industrial complex, medical laboratories, and they are making some nice little kingdoms for themselves because they are the, the town bully, they are the city bully, um, like the Gestapo. You, you know, they visit your office and they tell you what to do. And it is becoming pretty well known that if you don't do it, your life can be ruined too. So you better hop on board, you know. Um, like I said, they are just absolutely destroying people for money. And this, this absolutely has to stop. It has to stop. And they've been investigated multiple times and nobody can hold them accountable for this money. In fact, one recent article talked about the Pentagon spending $5 billion in the last few years on paying civilians for, you know, unnamed civilians for unnamed 
services. So is that possibly going to the fusion centers? It could be. It very well could be. It sounds very suspicious. And um, multiple federal agencies do help with the fusion centers, though most of the time the state uh, actually controls the the main money to it, but they do get help from different federal agencies and that very well could be. They also have um, fusion center partners. And what I mean by that is that they've got security uh, companies that work with them and those security companies will probably be the ones that pick your lock, come in, move things around uh, just to let you know they've been inside or they come in, they come in and take all your tax work or they come in and they sabotage this or that, or they come in and steal valuables and, and you find them on eBay. Um, they come in and they take your baby pictures that are irreplaceable and you never see them again. So they specialize in cruelty, in absolute total cruelty because they're trying to push people over the edge. Uh, another benefit to them is that they're hoping to push people into reacting because then they'll say, oh, we told you uh, Jonathan Smith was a bad guy. This is pre-crime. We could, we, all of our algorithm, algorithms told us that he was going to burst any time. So we need to have, um, in law, we need to have pre-crime so that we can just pick up people that we suppose may, at some point in time, do something. Of course, they don't say you've been harassing him for five years. And you know, maybe you took his, the, the urn that his mother's ashes were in and that drove him over the edge and he went to the neighbor who he knew was ha harassing and hit him in the face with a shovel, you know. Um, so then that person is on uh, uh, the list and then they get thrown in prison. And guess what? Um, the fusion centers and DHS basically have for-profit prisons that pay them and for-profit mental institutions. So they arrange to push the person over the edge, put them in prison, put them in a, a mental institution, and they make a profit doing it. And once there, the person is then subjected to a lot more experimentation and abuse. And there's nothing he or she can do about it. Karen, I'm going to jump in here because we're reaching that point and hands are starting to yes. pop up already. But let me yes. let me start up. I asked a couple of questions myself. Okay. First off, and you can just give me fast answers because I want to ask you a few. Do you think something like what you're describing is what happened to Rand Paul when he was out cutting his grass and that neighbor assaulted him? Could that have been one of those type of attacks, as it were? Oh, oh. You know, I, or is that conflating it maybe? Uh, that I'm not sure that I would say that it definitely was. Um, in my opinion, from what I've learned in the past several years, I think every single shooter that we've had has been uh, targeted by FBI and poked and poked and prodded and poked and poked and prodded and pushed into doing the shooting. I mean, if you, if you think about Myron May, who was a targeted individual and his crime was that he was trying to help a woman get her child back from uh, child services in Florida. And they turned out to be a mega uh, child trafficking uh, ring. Okay. So he was entirely correct in trying to get that child back, but it cost him his life because they didn't want it revealed. Somebody had actually ordered the child. They went to child services and said, I really like the child of so-and-so. You need to accuse the mother of whatever it is you need to in order to take the child so that I can abuse the child. So mm -hmm. that's why Byron May was trying to get this child back and he's hit with gang stalking and he was hit with electromagnetic attacks. And the police were told, oh, he's crazy. If he reports anything to you, just ignore him. Hmm. One other cool, like, quick question, then I'll open it up. Um, do, now, what you've described is pretty, you know, insidious and, and seems to be pretty pervasive. With mm -hmm. a fair amount of people have to know what's going on. Do yeah. you think the bulk of Congress, both the House and the Senate, fully know what you're talking about or only just a handful, ideally? And why do the rest of them not necessarily know? Um, I will tell you that for the last several years, I've been writing letters like a fiend. Um, last year, about February, I sent letters to every single senator and I said, do not vote the Protect America back, uh, Act back into effect because it is a 
it's a means to a crime. And I described some of what was going on, like I just did to you. I also sent a flyer that pretty much encapsulated what I've been talking about to each and every congressperson. So that's what, 430 or, or so, I'm not, and I'm not quite sure. So they have been told at this point. And I am more than sure that people have been writing them for years, telling them about this, and they're doing nothing about it. They either don't believe them or they know that's a taboo topic because the military industrial complex wants this program to continue because they can't get biospecimens, you know, for, they can't get consensual volunteers for poisons and gases and microchipping your arms, legs, lungs, heart, uh, brain. You know, uh, there's woman, one woman I talked to who said she was having a problem with her eye. She went to her, her ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist looked in her eye and said, oh, dear God. And she said, what? She said, there's a mechanism. She said, there's a, a machine. There's a there's something that's actually in your eyeball. And she said, well, can you get it out? Can you take it out? She said, I haven't the vaguest idea how they got it in. And for me to take it out of your eye, I would have to destroy your eye. She said, this is technology is far beyond what I've ever seen or even imagined. So they have people who go to doctors and when they're honest, they'll tell them, I don't know what this is. It's not supposed to be there. This is not part of the human body, but I can't do a thing about it. Because if I took it out, I could damage or kill you because I don't know how, to, how it got there. Amazing. As a little rejoinder to the question, did any of those people respond when you wrote? Um, no, none of them. Um, I will tell you that I have a friend who grew up with a man who became a vice president of a certain country, and I'm trying to hide his identity to protect him. And when the Trump administration sent people to that country, because they've been to many, um, he cornered somebody from the administration and said, look, this is going on in your country, and I suspect it's going on in mine. And if it's happening in both places, it's happening worldwide. And so the person said, it looks like we need to form a, a task force to look into the fusion centers. And he said, yes. And then they, he supposedly gave them my name as a point of contact. And um, uh, a team was uh, alerted to be investigating this throughout the world. And there they were waiting for an audience with Trump. Then all of the um, BLM, Antifa, and election fraud, and all that kind of stuff came up. And now, of course, Trump is out. So I'm not sure it would be effective to speak to Biden, because I think it, uh, that uh, he and certain people like him are completely in sync with this. It's uh, that they have no problem with this. Um, but I mean, it's always worth trying. And I keep writing letters. Um, but that is the best response we've gotten so far. That, uh, that told us that Trump and his people knew they'd been told about it and would consider uh, a task force. So we're hoping that um, with my letters and with the letters of, frankly, I don't even know how many other people because uh, other people are writing as well. And we just reinforce each other. We're hoping that at least people who are honest people are talking about this and not saying, oh, well, this one crackpot keeps writing. But no, this letter, this is a 15th letter on this topic that I've gotten, something's going on here. And I made sure to find out and ferret out who the congressmen were on the Directed Energy Weapons Caucus and wrote to them saying, you are being played for fool. These people are developing uh, weaponry uh, using innocent people and destroying their lives. So this is not a good thing. So I have, um, basically found out as many people as I can who are directly or, or adjunctly uh, involved in this type of thing and, and telling them that uh, people are being hurt by this. This is not a noble cause. This is not weapons development the way that it should be by using people who are non-consensual, you know, and by destroying their lives and destroying their reputations in order to do so. Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be important that we follow as far as you being a part of that, continuing the conversation, because we're going to want to get some infrastructure in there on how we can, all of us, write letters and help others be able to write letters, too. So we'll reinforce what you're doing. Kathy, I see your hand is up. Yes. Um, first of all, it seems like that 
is starting to take place, will take place very much in the Biden administration because I've heard people on TV saying those of us who support Biden need to be deprogrammed. And then um, how, I guess we stop, stop it by letter writing. Have you ever considered um, talking to Tucker Carlson because he's a great voice for um, that kind of thing for freedom? Have you considered Tucker? Uh, yes, I absolutely have tried to contact many uh, mainstream journalists um, and I get ignored. Uh, in fact, Laura Ingraham had an, uh, she was the only one who had an assistant contact me and talk to me at length. And I was basically told, no, sorry, we're not interested. Oh, that's too bad. I see that this under Biden, this could go on steroids. Very possibly. Have you been able to get on, like, say, Alex Jones or OANN or Newsmax or anybody of that ilk even? No, no I don't get responses. They don't believe me. Or I, I think I got a response from OAN saying, this is preposterous. We don't believe you. Well, they're very fearful then, that means, because why not even let it be aired and let the audience decide type of thing? Crazy. Uh, Charles, I see your hand is up. Thanks, Jeff. And I was going to invite folks that are on this call that have some relevance to the topic uh, to comment specifically. Um, you know, Marianne Petrie has presented on this show about, you know, family court abuse. And, and Karen did mention that case of Myron May, who died trying to rescue, you know, a child uh, from trafficking in that system. And, you know, Tyler Nixon, has worked with Roger Stone and he has a lot of Patriot friends who I guess are brand new targets and I'd love to hear his take on that as well. I'm curious if anybody on the calls actually has something subjected to them like she described here today. Heidi, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I'm not sure, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? yes, great. you sound yeah. great. Um, yeah, I've had actually quite a few, Tim Ferner who uh, was a former chief staff. Uh, he lives in New Zealand. And I've had some other guests on the show that, that kind of confirmed the same sort of um, thing. And it's very scary. It's very scary. I remember the first time I started hearing this, I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? Are you kidding me? Because um, it's almost unbelievable to a lot of us. And I think, you know, some of these things that, that Karen's going talking about from what I've heard um, from other whistleblowers are that this is something that's, you know, some of those things are egregious and they're safe for like top people that are really nuisance issues. You know, I mean, uh, they're not just doing some of these things to just everybody at the grocery store, but, um, but certainly they have the ability to do that. And I, they use CPS, definitely use CPS. They use your children against you. Um, I've been retaliated against recently and I, I had um, somebody call CPS and just um, on my 17 year old daughter and she's a dance team captain, you know, she's great. So, I mean, this, this kind of thing happens and it's the only thing we're going to do to combat it from what I talk to everybody is to join together. You know, everybody, we have to get rid of the political rhetoric and join together and say, Hey, you know, we got to protect each other. So. And tell us about your show, Heidi, real quick. Um, I do. I am an associate producer for CBS. Um, my story was, my own whistleblower story was on uh, CBS Whistleblower with Alex Ferrer, which is, they're in hiatus right now. I do a podcast right now that just started doing video. Um, it's called The Whistleblower Revolution. And it's, at, you can go to whistleblowerrevolution.com. We're just starting a third season. We have some John Kiriakou and, you know, a lot of other friends of yours here too, um, uh, other whistleblowers. So, it's, uh, it's everywhere you podcast. It's been picked up everywhere. It's great. Uh, CBS executive producers have been helping me and kind of took a shining to me. So it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> so you Thanks. can go to whistleblowerrevolution.com and check out more. If you want to know more about uh, the interviews I've done or like other whistleblowers, they have some really compelling stories along with just like Karen's that you just kind of want to scratch your head because mainstream media does not show this kind of stuff. So it won't touch you. It's a lot more exciting than most of the stuff they do show. <laughs> You'd think if they're no. looking to get eyeballs, this would really draw them in. You know, I would definitely say you'll need to follow up there with us uh, afterward, Heidi. We'll do some coordination on the site as far as what you're engaged in, too, just like with Karen. Uh, Jonathan, I see your hand is up. Hi, um, Karen. That was a 
very excellent presentation. Um, confirmed a lot of things that I think. Um, I actually worked in a fusion center uh, for about three, four months um, out of Microsoft's Building 34. Um, and I can't really talk about much, but I can tell you that I was hired um, probably because of my presentation on AI. So, um, and they were working on a lot of really interesting things. And um, basically uh, these fusion centers, the private and the public work together through the private public partnerships that were established through the financial system a long time ago, as you probably know this. And then also the intelligence committee has um, full authority over money and the treasury, et cetera, for the government. Um, that control was actually switched over um, in the early 2000s or late 90s. Um, I don't know if you've been able to confirm that or know about that, um, I but I can, I can look back and see if I can uh, find that piece of intel and I can forward it to you. But okay. it, I found it really fascinating uh, because, yeah, because of everything you described and how money and data is transforming. And uh, if you understand how deeply and like the foundations of how that is, you will be scared shitless because I am. <laughs> so, and uh, I actually understand those uh, radio frequency devices that you talk about. So, cause I was uh, targeted. Well, they can burn you. They can, uh, and I don't mean just, ooh, that burns. Um, I'm talking about waking up with second or third degree burns from being hit overnight. Will, and well, they it's, love it's, Yeah. It's that, and the, you can combine it with other things, and it can really mess you up psychologically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, totally. Jonathan, uh, Charlie here, and you've decided to do something about it commercially around um, more secure um, money, um, and, and blockchain, correct? Yeah, I, I would put myself as a researcher. Um, I really always have been so, and I, by my company and, and what we're doing, it's, it's more than a company. It's a partnership, a series of partnerships, and we share technology and everything's open source. And, um, but it comes from a foundational understanding of how this technology works and years upon years of research, um, to the traditional architecture uh, and then bringing it into the, the new age, essentially. But yeah. And Karen, well, we haven't gotten to the solutions. You want to touch on that real quick? We always have to discuss that. What can we do about this? Well, I would say the more letters, the better. And, and the more letters, not only to congressmen and senators, but seek out the uh, directed Energy Weapons Caucus again, but also um, write to your governor, write to your attorney general. I mean, I wrote to every single governor in the United States. I wrote to every single attorney general in the United States. I'm not asking people to do that. I'm asking them to pick out their state and go to governor down to the local police chief. Um, tell them that you know, find some of the articles about it. And if, you, if you're not targeted, you know, you could write to these people and, and send them some articles that you've seen um, and say, you know, I'm very concerned about this. What is it that you're doing about it? Do we have sufficient laws? You know, uh, if, if one of my neighbors decides to drive me out and use an electronic weapon, he can aim at me from his garage, which is his property. What can I do to have the police actually remove this weapon from him? Because frankly, technically, federal law says that that is a weapon of mass destruction and it is not allowed for a civilian to have it. It is not allowed for um, civilians to be targeted with them um, because um, those are war. So do you have corresponding state laws that we can go to to get these weapons removed. You know, I mean, also write to your local FBI, but I would say, you know, the FBI is in on this. So you can leave a paper trail 
And then you can show these people, I've contacted all the proper people and they do nothing. So I think we need laws that address this specifically so that we are not murdered in our own beds. And I will, I will volunteer this to you, the type of health problems that I got. And you know, I always used to tease that well into my 50s, um, I was um, obscenely healthy. You know, um, I have very good genetics that, you know, thank the Lord for both sides of my family. And I used to say, you know, we either live into our 80s or 90s or we're hit by a bus, you know, so we have very good genetics. But uh, overnight, almost when I started being hit with these weapons, I developed bleeding in the brain, um, a uh, lesion in the brain, which is not uncommon because they can make you have a stroke and die, uh, a damaged heart and uh, damaged retinas. So I've got vision damage and my main hobbies have been photography and art. So that doesn't go well with that. Um, and there are, other, there are other problems, but they came almost overnight. And so with the type of heart damage or with potential stroke, I'm not gonna see 90 like my mother is. My, my mother's 90 and my dad's almost 92. I'm not gonna see that, you know, because my my body has been too damaged from the um, directed energy weapons. And I have been, uh, I'll wake up and I will have burns, you know, which is radiation dermatitis. And um, you know, the potential for this type of 24 uh, seven attack um, to cause cancer is very good. It's almost a given uh, and, and you will die from something that this induces. Jerry Ann, I saw you were making some comments. You want to talk a little bit out loud about it? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Everything <laughs> she has said has scared me. <laughs> but um, as far as, you know, like the family court system and CPS, uh, they're not playing around. They target people and then they target the families, children when they grow up. I want to, what do you think of that? What do you think of, um, you know, I know there's no, getting rid of CPS, but they're just uh, ruthlessly going after people using family court as a platform as well. Lawfare. I mean, uh, the mafia basically has taken over and is using all of our laws against us, you know, and it's such, I mean, the idea that human trafficking, child trafficking is more lucrative than drugs is astonishing. It truly is astonishing. Um, plus some of these children, I'm afraid, are not only abused in the way that we know that uh, they're being abused, but they're also being used to harvest adrenochrome, mm -hmm. which is also a drug that rich people are paying tons for. So again, it's money, money, money. And these people have gotten into every single one of our institutions and they've made sure that nothing works. There is no justice. There is no law. It's only who you are. And then when they find out who you are, if you have money, then they twist the laws to serve you and to oppress or suppress somebody who's complaining or asking for justice. So the whole system needs to be overthrown, overthrown overhauled. Um, the best way I can think to start is to make these people aware that you know. You know, and numbers of us write and say, we know. I mean, you could uh, maybe get a group together and say that we, you know, we want this change. This is not tolerable in a real civilization, you know, but I would say you might want to do it with a number of people. It might be safer or you might make an organization, just make up the, the name, make an organization and send it as that organization and say, this is an organization of 25 people. And we know about this and we request that you look into it and you stop it. Because um, if, you're, if you're too vocal, you might become a target when you weren't before. Um, I do it because I'm already a target. What the heck, you know? So that's one way to start and then, you know, talk about it, talk about it at churches, talk it about it at bridge clubs, talk it about, talk about it with whoever you get together with, talk about it while you're watching a football game or before or after or at dinner or something and um, say, oh, who, who should, who should we contact about this? Do we, do we know a pastor or a priest who is an activist and would say, hey, you know, the Catholics won't stand for this. Hey, the Episcopalians won't stand for this. You know, try to get news out like that and just get voices talking about it because cockroaches don't like the light. So shine the light on them. 
real quick, I was going to say before squeezing the last question, is there like a little one page flyer or anything you've got up on your website that kind of gives a synopsis for all of us that are neophytes that we can circulate at that bridge club, as it were? Um, I can send you something if it's not on the on the site. Um, like I said, I did the site and I gave the gentleman a bunch of flyers and letters to put up, but I don't know if he's completed at all. Well, there's an awful lot. I can share my screen for a minute if you can take a peek, because then we can make sure we focus in on it. But here's your documents page. Let's see if I can read it. Um, one, with the best one right now, in my opinion, is it's just called one page flyer. I don't know if he has it up. Not, nothing titled as such. I you, will send it to you. If you will, because again, that's what we're going to want to focus in on in our continuing the conversation page. We'll have one up for her. So we'll certainly, want, when you click on there, you'll be able to learn a lot more about this and get more engaged. Because, you know, obviously, like, and, you know, it's kind of comical how this becomes in a sad way. This is the theme every time we do this show is it's down to you and me to make it happen. There's no legislation, no one to vote for. It's like there's no one to help you other than helping yourself. And if enough of us help ourselves, we're really helping each other. So I, I hate to hear that, but you know, it's it's the truth in everything typically. Jonathan, you've got the last question. Are you there? So beside yeah, oh. so besides kind of uh, talking about it and shining the light on the cockroaches, so to speak, you know, what would be the best way or methodology to, in order to band together, um, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, group together and share some information? Is it besides these two platforms? Is there any, any other suggestions that you have? You know, right now I'm at, I'm at a loss. Um, like technology, that, maybe. I, I found it really interesting to see the influx of uh, specific users onto both uh, Telegram and Signal. Uh, I've had those for almost uh, like a long time now. So it's been very interesting. Well, I, I um, got a couple of new accounts, I think on Gab and Cloud Hub, and I've been trying to put up all the uh, most recent interviews and some of the early articles just so I can get the topic out there. So um, do, you, do you understand, do you understand like, uh, like IPFS and that kind of stuff or just like different types of database structures as far as, because the internet's here to stay. Like we have satellites that are beaming down the internet and connecting everything together. So unless you can shoot satellites out of the sky, you know, it's not going to go away. Um, so do you understand like the IPFS and like being able to securely put data in the internet so anyone can access it and it can't be shut down? No, I really don't. I would, you know, people say, what's your NSA? You should be like highly technical. No, I was not highly technical. Yeah. I was writing a, a journalist. It's basically a top secret journalist. So I was not yep. uh, very highly technical at all, except for the ability to, you know, do the work and submit it there, you know. So I did, totally. I can't and, and, and build something myself. <laughs> I just, I don't yeah. have the no, no, totally. I get it. Me, me too. Um, I'm more of a designer, uh, but I work with a lot of super technical people um, who, who are very capable as far as this goes. Um, uh, I could provide some solutions for that if anyone wants to reach out. Uh, I believe I dropped my email in the chat. Okay. All right. That sounds very good. Excellent. Thanks. That was a good little final question there. Karen, appreciate you being here today. This was really enlightening and hopefully motivating. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me this platform to, to get the story out to more people. Because uh, like I said, probably 80% of the people are random. You know, I mean, you've got the whistleblowers, you've got the journalists that they don't like their stories. You've got the neighbor who shudders that the fusion center head doesn't like the color of. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. And they, and they go after ex-wives and anybody for petty vengeance reasons. But 80%, as far as I can tell, are absolutely totally random. So at a certain point, it could affect any or all of the, uh, I mean, obviously it affects me as a whistleblower and being targeted for several years now but it could affect the guy down the street just because somebody who lives next to him doesn't like the way he cuts his grass. They can put in a report on him. Totally false report. Nobody cares. They don't care if it's outrageous. They just say, oh, 
another tick box. You know, we've got another person to tell the um, the government that we're having to watch. So that's cha-ching, more money. Well, it's certainly going to get us all motivated because unless we all individually get off our duff, they'll be knocking on our door before you know it, like you said, because they keep needing to open the circle because they're going to run out of people. They just got to keep adding more and more and more. And the next thing you know, now they're down to you. There it's you go. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Thanks again for today. Thank you. Thank you.